Well, hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're doing a light burn power grid test tutorial. I have received several requests to do a tutorial on this and that's what we're going to do today. So the very first thing you want to do after you get your light burn open is we need to click on the square icon and draw one of our test squares. We can then click the arrow, which is our select and highlight our square and we want to change its size. So the first thing we can do is we can unlock its ratios and we're gonna change this to five millimeters wide and five millimeters tall. And from there, we can just click the lock ratio again. So we have our one square here. We now need to highlight our square and then come over here and click array, which will bring up this menu. This is where we can set our different arrays. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to decide how many columns wide we have. So we'll put 10 and tall. We'll go 10 as well. Um, from there, you want to make sure that your padding between the edges on both the Y and the X axis are both clicked. And then we will choose our spacing between our squares. And in my case, I want to go five millimeters between each one. Once you're happy with that, just come down here at the bottom and click OK. I now want to add our text and you can do that by coming to the left hand side of your light burn control panel, clicking on this little letter A here, which will bring up the ability to open up text boxes. Now clicking anywhere will bring up your cursor and we're going to start with our millimeters per second and we'll start with a simple small number 50 millimeters per second. Now, after you get this done, we can select it and kind of semi position it where we want it here and change our size over here. Now, I want to put it down to be five millimeters, which is the same size as our blocks. Once we're happy with the size, just get it roughly in place where you want it right about here. And now to save a little bit of time um, where we don't have to set the height on these letters, we can just highlight the 50, click Command D and duplicate it and then shift it down and then Command D, duplicate it all the way down until we get our number 50 in front of each one of our rows. And then we can duplicate it and place the number 50 all the way along the bottom for each one of our columns. We now want to change our values on the left to the different millimeters per second. So double clicking on each one will bring up the cursor. We can change this one to 80 and we'll double click and we'll make this one 100. Double click on the next one down and 120 and so on and so on until we get the values that we want in all of our rows. And once we're happy with their positioning, we can align them all by capturing them and highlighting them. And then up here on our alignment icon, we can just click either left, vertical center, or in my case, right. And that will align all of our numbers from top to bottom. And in the same way that we changed our values for our millimeters per second, we will do the exact same thing here on our bottom row, changing all of our values from 100 all the way down to 10% power. And just like we did with our other numbers, we will capture all these lower power numbers and click our horizontal leveling, align horizontal center, and that will bring them all to where we want them. So clicking the text button again, we can add our text and in the bottom half here, we can put power and that will represent our power percentage. And then up here at the top or on the left side, we need to add one for millimeters per second. That way when we're burning, we know what our grid means. Well, right now everything is on the same cut layer 
And what we're going to do is we're going to make this first cut layer for our letters. We'll drop the speed to 120 and the power we'll put at 65. And as well, we can even come up here and change it so we know what we're looking at. We'll just put lettering. But what we want to do at this point is assign each one of our lines to a layer or a cut layer. So we'll highlight this first line and we're going to make this cut layer 01. And we can highlight our second line and we will come down here and make that cut layer 02 and then highlight our third line and we will make that cut layer 03. So carry on all the way down to the bottom, assigning each one of your lines here to its own um, cut layer. We now need to set the parameters of each line. Um, so we'll just finish assigning this one here. And if you're not sure which one of these cut layers is for which one, you can right click on it. And when you do that, it will flash. So we know this is for the 50 line power. So we are going to change our speed to 50 millimeters per second and 100% power. We also want to make sure that it's set for fill and only one pass. We can then click on the second line. We know this is 80% power, so we can do that. Again, 100% power we need it at. Fill is already clicked and we'll click OK. So we will continue to go all the way down the line here, making sure that each one is set to their proper speed. We can highlight each one and label them so that we can know at a quick reference exactly what layer we're looking at in case we need to toggle them on or off. But bottom line is each one of these rows will get set for its speed and be sure to set them to fill and 100% power. Remember guys, fill in this case is for engraving. If you leave it at line, you are testing for cutting. With our speed set at each row, we now need to set our power at each column. And you want to do that by highlighting a column and you want to use your shape properties. Now, if you don't see this in the menu over here on the right hand side, it's very easy to get at. Just go up to the top and you want to click on window and down here at the bottom we can see shape properties. Click that to highlight it and there it is, bottom right. So you'll click that and this will now bring up the shape properties for our highlighted row and we can see it's at 100% power. But we want this at 10% power so we're going to drop this down to 10%. Simple as that. Now that entire column will burn at 10% and then we'll highlight the 20% row again in shape properties go to your power scale and type in 20% same thing goes with the next column you will highlight the entire 30% row and in the shape properties you've got it 30% right here so do that for all of your columns all the way across to 100% and when you're all done with that, we can click preview and you'll see all of your power here and getting progressively darker. But I've got an issue down here and oh, never mind. I see why over here on the right hand side um, in the cut layers, I can see that my very last is set to line. So we'll put that to fill and click our just our preview. And there we go. We're back to normal. Now, this is only showing power. Light burn does not take into account uh, speed in comparison to power. So it is only showing you a power scale at this point, not your speed. But when this is actually burnt, it will be um, kind of a grading from your lightest down to your darkest from corner to corner. So that is pretty much your power grid done. All you need to do at this time, click File. We'll come down here, Save As, and I guess, I don't know, I'll call this one uh, Test Grid for Show. 
and uh, we'll just click save and that's all she wrote so why don't we get this in the laser we'll give this a burn and i'll show you what it looks like when it's uh, burnt and this is what you end up with now i lost my power percentage tag down here just because i cut it out of a piece of scrap but we know that this is our power percentage and this is our speed in millimeters per second. And we can pretty much um, conclude that for this one anyway, for this material, 10% power is pretty much useless all the way up. Um, but 20% here, we can see that as the speed slows down, the squares get darker. And same with 30 and 40 and 50 and so on, all the way up to 100%. Up here at 100% at 50 millimeters a second, we almost cut through. I mean, you can almost see right through that. But what you can do is if you have a custom application, you have some settings in mind, you will know exactly now how it is going to burn on this material just by choosing the square and then cross-referencing. So if you like this particular color, well, you know that's 150 millimeters per second at 50% power. So there you go. That is the custom-made one. Now, this is a very customizable way to do it, but if you want the simple way, let me show you. We'll click New here to start a new project, which clears our layers. And if you come up to the top and you go under the tab of Laser Tools, we'll just click this and down at the bottom, you will see Material Test. If you click that, it will open a menu that opens all your parameters. And if we look here, we've got uh, columns of 10 uh, vertical rows and uh, 10 horizontal columns. You can change that however much you want. You can change your parameters, you know, speed, power, interval, passes, and you can do that for both your vertical and your horizontal columns, you know, power, speed, interval, etc. Um, you can set your speed here, your minimums from 10, and in this case, uh, we'll put it up to 50 to match our one that we made earlier in the show. And we will put our maximum at 200 to match exactly the one that we did. You can set the height and the width of the boxes that you're burning and the position of your burn on the um, laser's work area. And you can now set under your power your minimum power and your maximum and 10%, 100% is what we set on our custom one. You can edit your material settings. Now, this is going to uh, change your number of passes, whether you want it lined to test your cutting or whether you want it to be a fill to test for engraving, which is what I'm making here. And when you're happy with that, you click OK. You can edit your text settings and that will allow you to set um, the speed and the power for what you want the text of your test grid to be burnt with. And once you're happy, you click OK. And you can just come up to the top here and click Preview once you're happy with all these settings. And guys, there you go. It is made for you that quick with the parameters that you set. But if you want one that's more customizable, you can follow the tutorial at the beginning of this video. Um, but this is a very quick and easy way to get a power grid to test a material and very quickly set the parameters that you want. So at this point, all you want to do is save this. You can save it as a G code just by clicking the save G code. And then from there, you can just title it and uh, carry on. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm actually going to burn this one as well. And then we will have a pretty good idea of uh, what this one looks like. So I'll show you that one as well. And there we go. This is the one that is created by the Lightburn software itself. And the first thing here that we can notice is that size-wise, it's a lot smaller than the custom one I did. However, you can adjust that by in your settings, adjusting the space in between your grid when you are first laying out your array and lining up your columns and, and your rows. So don't be discouraged by the size. That is completely adjustable. But again, the same results. 
um, where we can see that 10% is pretty much pointless on this. They use different values because of course, you put the lowest speed that you want and then the highest speed that you want and they equally space them. So you end up with some weird values like 50, 67, 83, et cetera, as opposed to the one that we did that I made them a little more even. So if you're not too concerned about that and you really don't mind these odd values, this one here, letting light burn do it for you, is a very quick and easy way. You don't have to have to mess with the lettering. Um, it puts all the information on here for you. The only information it does not give you is the material that you put it on. But of course, you have the material. So there you go. There's the quick and easy way to do it versus the custom long method. And there you have it power grid test tutorials on Lightburn and how to make your own. Guys, this is something where if you're starting getting into laser engraving with a diode laser, this is something that becomes very important and a very useful tool for you. Every single substance, whether you are engraving leather, wood, cardboard, anything that you are engraving or cutting, it has different properties and those properties will affect the way that it engraves. And honestly, the only way to get a true and accurate setting and get the results that you want is by doing one of these test grids on either a spare piece that you have or on a scrap. That way you can choose exactly the settings that you want and get the exact results that you want. Everything else other than that is guesswork and you really aren't sure. By doing these test grids on different substances over the time, if you are working on a piece that you don't have spares of and you don't have extras and you cannot do a test grid, all of these other test grids that you do will give you some knowledge by comparing um, comparable substances or comparable materials and the settings and you can kind of get in there and get an idea of where you need to be when it comes to setting your speed and your power. Um, it will not guarantee results but at least it will give you an idea. So for that reason, every test grid that I do on different materials I save that little square and I have a stack of them, whether it be a slate coaster or different species of wood, cherry, walnut, plywood, what have you. I save those so that I have references. Um, <clears throat> guys, this is something that it's not rocket science. It's not hard to do. And if you're not concerned about perfect values and round numbers, then you can just use the quick method that I showed you in the second half of this video and let Lightburn do it on its own. Either way, if you're doing laser engraving with a diode laser, get yourself some of these test grids, do test burns first, and stop wasting your material. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope to those that asked for this tutorial, to those that requested it, I hope I've answered your questions. I hope I have given you an easy tutorial to step in and feel confident to make your own test grids. Um, again, it's a very important part of laser engraving. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click the bell and then you're not going to miss the notifications of future episodes of the program. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the content. I hope you found it useful. I hope you're going to try this for yourself if you're doing your own laser engraving. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.